for a place that's so extreme, the Arctic can tell us a lot about what's going on around the rest of the planet. It's such a fragile environment, there's a good chance it will be affected by the slightest changes. That's why scientists have been up there looking for signs of global warming. They're worried that the air around the Earth may be heating up. The reason is a buildup of gases like the ones that are released when gasoline is burned. Scientists have found some signs, but nothing conclusive. But one thing they know for sure is that if the planet is getting warmer, then the Arctic, as we know it, is in trouble. It's a great, gray, drizzly day for ducks, so Randall Pokiak is going hunting. But Pokiak is worried. He keeps hearing the scientists talk about global warming. We're very concerned about uh, what kind of effect it's going to have on the wildlife, because if, if there's any changes, um, they can either chase the animals away or bring a lot more in. Pokiak wants answers. The Coast Guard ship Nahidik is seeking them. It's nearly midnight when she slips her moorings and heads out to the Arctic Ocean. On board, a team of scientists who will try to predict the planet's future by probing its climactic past. The clues lie deep beneath the ocean floor. Cores of ancient sediment contain pollen from spruce and fir and hemlock. We can actually see here a continuous record of climate change in time. So we do know that, in fact, the Arctic has in the past been much warmer. If the climate warmed, the tree line would once again move north. The tundra would shrink. And wildlife, it would have to adapt. We're talking about systems that have taken hundreds of thousands of years to evolve, and now they're being faced with changes that were, you know, we're talking 20, 50 years. One such species is the caribou. If, as is suggested, there are more storms and more snow, winter foraging would be difficult. Rising sea levels would flood large areas of some of the most important wetlands for waterfowl breeding in the world. Polar bears and walruses that hunt from pack ice might be driven ever further north. I would suspect that some of the species that are already under heavy survival pressure in fact, that may be just about all they can take, and they might disappear. And a way of life might disappear. These are rumpen bushes. That of the people who depend on the animals and the birds. Willie Grubin is 72. For the natives, it's going to be too hot, uh, and it's not very good for hunting, too, uh, in the wintertime, for trapping. But the most important impact could be on the permafrost, the permanently frozen ground that underlies much of the Arctic. This cliff of ice on the Tukteoktik Peninsula is a dramatic demonstration of the risk. Just a few weeks ago, those bushes, some 10 meters below me, were on the cliff I'm standing on. It just took one hot summer for the ice in the ground to melt, the ground to turn to liquid, collapse, and flow away. That's what climate change could do. When we build our houses, when we build our pipelines, when we build our roads, when we build our airfields, those all have to sit on the surface. Now all of a sudden we may have this extra unexpected facet that maybe nature's going to start to melt it for us. A warmer Arctic would be an easier place for industry shipping the military and some species. But if what the scientists say could happen does happen, much that is treasured in this icy, vulnerable land could be devastated or lost and the Arctic changed forever.